letting some people in and that's, and that's good. We'll keep doing that. Um, we'll have an agenda here. We'll show that to you, but first, uh, welcome to all of you coordinators, um, association folks and prospective officials. Uh, welcome to our officiating recruitment forum. Um, the, we have held one of these in June and it was really successful. So we thought we'd have another one and we're, we're glad that you're a part of it uh, tonight. So um, the, pandem the pandemic has forced us to look at alternative methods for recruitment and training. And we found some really good things with it. And we think that this opportunity provides all of you the chance to uh, ask questions, find out more about the sports that you enjoy and like, and uh, can ask questions of associations and leaders that can help you along the way. So um, again, it allows us to reach the entire state in all sports. And we're thankful that you're all joining us to take in taking that first step uh, towards what we hope to be a successful officiating career. So you'll hear from a number of accomplished officials tonight uh, that have enjoyed success at the high school level and beyond, and they would like you to have that same success. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over to uh, Laura McIntoon, Assistant Director with the League, who will cover some housekeeping and logistical items. Good evening, everyone. And as Jason said, thanks for joining us. Our numbers are growing. Um, I think it's good we have a virtual event on a snowy night that may have caused some issues otherwise. Um, just a couple of things. Um, many of us are well-versed at Zoom by this point of a pandemic, but I would strongly encourage you to keep your cameras on um, just provides us a little bit more of a, a view of who's with us and an opportunity to see you and read body language and tailor our presentation a little bit. Would ask that you would mute your microphones if you have not already. Um, there may be a chance to ask some questions and we'll give you that opportunity at that point to unmute. I would strongly encourage you to use the chat. You'll find the chat icon down at the bottom and using that for questions that you may have going through. Um, there are a lot of people here that can answer those questions for you if it's something you're wondering about, don't wanna ask in a large group, et cetera. Likewise, you're going to hear from a number of officials tonight. And after you hear their um, presentation, you may have a question just for that person. Please feel free to use that also. And then we're going to um, reference tonight several times a few different places that you can find some resources. And if you're seeing my screen right now, one of those is out, let's move that tab off. One of those is out on our website and there's a tab that's officials and judges. And if you dig into that tab a bit, there are a number of officiating resources over here one of which includes a list of officials associations. And you'll hear more about associations tonight, but also some pieces about recognition and officiating voices. Um, Jason will talk a bit about that. And then we also have a microsite that was built just for tonight's event. And that's where you found the registration pieces, the agenda for tonight. Um, this also does have some resources on it. If you're ready to become an official, and you're at this spot, um, you can find those resources there also. So this is um, kind of a temporary spot to put some resources just for tonight. Know that that permanent go-to place is out at mshsl.org and then officials and judges. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Jason to do a quick overview of the night and then introduce our first speaker. Thanks, Laura. <clears throat> Again, questions, comments at all, just throw them in the chat and Laura and Pam and others will be monitoring the chat and um, and they can answer questions as we go, as well as our coordinators and our uh, other experienced officials that can answer your questions. We're now going to uh, uh, move on to uh, an introduction, a welcome from Eric Martins, who's the executive director of the Minnesota State High School League. Um, and a little about Eric. Eric was born in St. Paul, lived in Mankato with his entire K-12 experience taking place in New Orleans. Growing up with four brothers, his mom believed it was important to experience everything. So he had experience in three sports, band, choir, student leadership, uh, and a musical as well. I didn't know that about Eric until I read that. 
Um, he attended St. John's and majored in math with a secondary education minor. His teaching and coaching career included stops in Mitchell, South Dakota, Cosmos, Minnesota, and Sock Rapids Rice. And he later became a principal in Sock Center and Sock Rapids Rice as well. Um, Eric's wife, Nancy, is a director in St. Cloud. Um, he has three daughters with Nancy, Lauren, Lindsay, and Kristen and they enjoy vacationing the lake, music, golf, sports spectating, and uh, spending time together as a family. So with that, I'll turn it over to Eric for his welcome from the league. Thanks, Jason, appreciate that. And didn't know I was gonna get my bio read that carefully. Uh, that's great. And uh, I am gonna save everyone from that musical experience and uh, you'll appreciate that part of tonight. Uh, it's always good to smile at the beginning of a, of a meeting and. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody on this call, uh, whether it is uh, aspiring officials or whether it's our longtime officials and clinicians or our staff at the Minnesota State High School League. Minnesota State High School League is a large group of uh, individuals coming together really around one purpose, and that purpose is to provide the very best experience we can for the students who participate in our activities and our athletics. So I just want to say thank you to everybody for finding time tonight and uh, and expressing interest or bringing your expertise to uh, to the table here this evening. Um, we know that uh, when it comes to adults and the work that they do within our high school league, uh, there's a lot that direct and a lot that organize and do those kinds of things. But then there are coaches and there are ADs and there are officials that really make the games and contests happen. Um, and when it comes to that, without uh, those folks at the local level, in the gyms, on the rinks, uh, in the on the field, at the tracks, whatever it happens to be, uh, it doesn't happen without really uh, quality individuals who focus primarily on students. And so uh, that's, that's really what the goal of the Minnesota State High School League is, to prepare uh, our students for what comes next and to do that through amazing experiences in athletics and in fine arts. Um, as you consider moving forward as, as an official, I think there's a couple of things that I just wanna make a, a mention of. So I've already said it a number of times, but the number one goal is around students and everything we do here uh, should focus on student experience. There's a lot of pieces that must come together for that experience to be a quality experience and officiating and quality officiating is certainly a part of that. And, uh, and so we know that we have many folks who have dedicated years and years, 30 and 40 year officials uh, that are in our league still contributing and supporting uh, all of the activities that go on. So never lose sight of the fact that while you may be looking to improve your, your craft and to, to move up and to get more opportunities, every time that you step on the court, every time that you blow the whistle, uh, whatever it is that you're, you're doing, judge somebody in a routine, whatever that happens to be, it still should be focused on kids. I think the second thing that's really critical and important uh, when it comes to the officiating side of things is you are there to maintain the integrity of the game. And remember always that this is part of a high school experience. And so there's a, there's a level of decorum, there's a level of respect, and there are a set of rules that need to be followed. And you are the person that makes that happen every time that you step out there. And the students, the coaches, and the fans, despite the fact that they might disagree with the call or with the determination, whatever it might be, know that that is your role. And, uh, and that's a big role to have. Uh, and it, it's important that you are there to maintain that. And by maintaining the integrity of the, the uh, game and the contest, you're going to also maintain a level of respect for yourself and for the work that you and all of the other officials do within our league. I think that's critical. And then finally, as you start into this, you may not see this as part of your responsibility as well, but I've always remembered those officials who really understood that this was part of an educational experience and taught even while they were officiating. And that goes with whether it happens to be with a coach or it happens to be with a participant. You know, it might be that one comment just as you are, you know, passing by them that makes them understand that first of all, you're a human and not just someone with a whistle and that you understand where they're at. Or it might be a knowing smile or it might be some other gesture that indicates that you really know where they're at and you're trying to assist them. Uh, good officials communicate regularly while they're doing what they do and they do it all in the, for the purpose of guiding and, uh, and teaching as you go forward. So again, I, I applaud you for taking time out of your evening to come here and to learn more. I'm excited for those of you that are venturing into officiating perhaps for the very first time. Um, I can tell you that 
As a 23 year old head coach, I didn't think the officials were there to, uh, to assist me. Um, but over time I got used to that and I built some great relationships with officials who I worked with uh, as a coach and they were officials and, and realized that we are all on the same team and that we work together for the same reason. And the win is when our students walk off the court or skate off the ice or run off the track and have had a great experience. It's not about calling the perfect game or uh, getting everything absolutely right, but it's about creating that, that great experience. And so if you're here for that purpose and to step into that arena, you are absolutely in the right place. You are fortunate this evening to have some great, uh, great mentors. Uh, and I had a, have a good friendship with Mike Spanier, who's uh, not only a, an NFL official, but was a great high school or a middle school principal as well, an educator. And I just always appreciated his, his view of how things were. And he also taught me that it's okay to admit when you make a mistake and told me exactly how he does it in the game and grabs this head coach and that head coach and says, you know what, come here, here's what happened. This is what I made for a call. We're going to stick with that call. It was the wrong call, but we're going to go anyway. And you need to know that. And away we go. And uh, did a great job with those kinds of things and, uh, and built a, a strong level of respect among the participants and the coaches and his officiating teammates. And so I hope that you're in it for the long haul and you're ready to step into a, an incredible journey. Thanks so much. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. Uh, Eric's a very busy very big man and so we appreciate uh, his willingness to come on tonight and uh and share that welcome from the league so uh thank you eric for that uh next on the agenda uh is another colleague of mine from the league uh tim layden um he's our communications coordinator at the league but he's also a 30-year basketball official so he's going to talk about taking those first steps and how to get started and um, getting connected with associations and mentors uh, so that you can have a successful start. But a little bit more about, about Tim, uh, longtime league official, uh, Wisconsin Division Three in JUCO, has worked a number of sports, including soccer, basketball, baseball, and softball. Uh, a, a major leader in Minneapolis Officials Association, a board member and past president, um, a league clinician, um, and he's also on the High School Today editorial board representing high school officials nationwide. So with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Tim Layton. Well, thank you very much, Jason, and an additional welcome to all of you for joining us tonight in this officiating forum. I'm for you prospective officials. I congratulate you with all my heart on making perhaps the most important decision of your officiating career, and that being taking those first steps. And those first steps include you being here with us tonight. I, I look back 30 years ago. I was in your shoes and I was about to take those first steps to explore this world of officiating. It was something I didn't know a whole lot about, but I was a part of that 90 some percent where the peak of my athletic career ended when I was in high school. And I wanted to be able to give back. I wanted to be able to say thank you for the experiences I had as a high school student participating and officiating was my avenue to do that. I am so eternally grateful that I did take those first steps because when I look around this Zoom meeting tonight, I see so many faces that I've had the pleasure of working with either in an athletic contest or in a leadership role. Each one of them is on their own officiating journey as well. Now, three decades ago, I had the great fortune of having officiating pioneers and outstanding leaders and mentors take me under their wings and show me the way. A few of them, again, are on this meeting right now. They provided the guidance, the wisdom, and the tools that helped show me the way. Now, those are some of the incredible benefits of joining an association, and those are the things I'm going to visit with you about briefly this evening. Now, whether you, the activity of your choice is one that has an orange ball that goes in a hoop, a black, a black disc that goes in a net, the one that has two points that are scored for a takedown, or a Pike Sukahara is worthy of a 10, 
joining an association is really a key integral part of beginning your journey as an official. Now there are numerous options available when looking to join an association. Some associations are sports specific and other associations might cover two or more activities. Now when looking at joining an association, here are a couple of things that you can look at. Now, when you are assigned games, that is the, this is the avenue of where you are assigned games. Now, please know that going in as you begin your officiating journey, you likely will begin your journey by being assigned games at the sub varsity level. That's great. That is a place for you to learn. It's a place for you to grow. It's a wonderful place to start. The opportunities after that, the opportunities for advancement are endless. Continuing education, that's another benefit of joining an association. Along the way, your association will provide a wealth of information from the National Federation of State High School Associations and us at the Minnesota State High School League that will keep you updated with rule changes, uniform modifications, or changes in mechanics, among a myriad of other things. Mentoring programs, that's an incredible benefit of joining an association. One of the greatest benefits of joining an officials association is the opportunity it provides to either be a mentor or find one. Now mentors are those folks that lead us through the good times and they shepherd us through the challenges that we will face. They provide us with the necessary tools for the tool belts that we use when we officiate these contests. Another item is networking. Networking is the ability to meet new people and engage with them through the avocation of officiating that is an incredible way of creating those friendships that last a, li a lifetime. Now, there are many of us that, that when you continue your journey, you're going to hear a common refrain during the basketball season, for example, that says, quote, these are my winter friends, end quote. Within the Minnesota State High School League, there are more than 6,000 contest officials. Those are a lot of officiating friends. Now, through your assignments, you likely will be paired with an official from another association. Through that networking, I am confident that you are certainly going to grow as not only an official, but also as an individual. As this officiating forum continues, you will receive just an incredible amount of information. It's going to seem overwhelming at times in retaining as many tidbits of information that you can. I really encourage you to remember the importance of joining an association. It can be the difference between a successful journey or a lonely one. Now, near the end of this meeting, you will have an opportunity to visit associations, and I believe there are a dozen of them that are with us here tonight. You will be able to join them through breakout sessions. There, you can hear additional information from association leaders that really are eager to assist you and to get you started. Now, one more additional nugget of information we'd like you to remember, and it's a really important one. The Minnesota State High School League and its officials associations, we are here. We are here to support you every step of the way to make your officiating journey a successful one. We want you to be able to share your journey years from now. In closing, it's been an honor and a privilege to share this brief piece of information with you uh, during this forum. I wish you the very best, and I look forward to seeing you years from now, excitedly sharing your journey with others. Thanks, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the officiating forum. Thanks, Tim. Excellent. I, I might have to phone a friend to Jenny Smith to confirm if that was the correct pronunciation. Of I was quite impressed. <laughs> Tim, you get a 10.0 just for pronouncing Pike Sukahara correctly. So you congrats on that. <laughs> That's from my reporting <laughs> days back in the day. You rock. You rock. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate that. And as he mentioned, we do have associations that we can connect you with uh, tonight and in the future. Uh, we do have uh, more than 100 unique officials associations across the state uh, covering all 18 of our sports that have officials and um, any sport or any area of the state that you're interested in, we can get you connected either tonight or after the meeting. 
Um, so thanks, Tim, uh, for that information. Uh, we're going to move into some officiating voices, and Tim alluded, <laughs> excuse me, alluded to that a little bit earlier that we have some experienced officials who can talk about their experiences and how they got into officiating and what they like about it and what advice they have for for all of you that are, are thinking about getting started with your officiating journey. And, and first uh, on our officiating voices uh, list is Jenny Smith, a uh, longtime gymnastics official. Jenny is from Woodbury, Minnesota, and she's been a gymnastics official with the league for 18 years. She has held a variety of leadership roles in gymnastics, including serving as president of the Minnesota Girls Gymnastics Officials Association, high school league gymnastics clinician, state gymnastics judge, officials advisory committee member, and a gymnastics coach for over 20 years for all age levels. Uh, Jenny is a finance intake manager at Fager Drinker Biddle Wreath. Am I close? You know, there's so many words stuck together. You did a great lot. job. You I, did bet you, great. I bet you cash a check with that name on it. Outside <laughs> gymnastics, she enjoys downhill skiing, traveling, and spending time with her family and friends. So, Jenny Smith, take it away. Excellent. Well, thank you, Jason. And again, Tim, great job on that, Pike Sukahara. But as Jason mentioned, I am a gymnastics official with the Minnesota State High School League. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy it so much, but also I just like to welcome you all here this evening. We're thrilled that you're here and um, it's a great meeting to just get started with any sort of questions that you have. Um, I wanted to, to talk very briefly about kind of how I first started becoming an official, um, why I keep coming back year over year, and then just some a little bit of advice that I have. Um, as you guys are considering becoming, taking those first steps to becoming an official. Um, I actually was encouraged to become an official my senior year in high school. I had a couple of former coaches and teachers that were actually also gymnastics judges reach out to me and encourage me to become an official after I graduated. They connected me to the right people like association leaders and um, my freshman year in college, I got started, and I, I, have, not, I have not looked back a day since. Um, you could really tell uh, that they loved the sport of gymnastics and wanted to recruit young officials as well to stay in that sport, whether it was through coaching or mentoring um, or officiating as well. So it was just a casual approach in the gym one day, and I really, really appreciated them reaching out to me. Um, as Jason mentioned, I've kept coming back for 18 years and hands down, I do it every year just for the love of the sport to stay in it. Um, the positive impact that an official can play, not only for the gymnasts themselves, but coaches and a lot of other fellow judges that you meet year over year. Um, I know definitely I cannot do those flips twists or turns anymore that I used to be able to do when I was a teenager, but <laughs> I still love staying involved with gymnastics and, like I said, giving back. I've also made some really awesome connections and friendships with a lot of the other officials I've met. Um, I think it was, I don't know if it was Eric or Tim, I can't remember, but your winter friends, I could not agree more. <laughs> um, while we don't see each other a ton during the off season, when we see our my officials, when I see them again during the season, usually it's on a cold and snowy night. Um, it's honestly like picking right back up where we left off and it's a, just a really great experience. So just in closing, as I really encourage you guys, just go for it. For with, when you guys are here, um, one interested in becoming an official, don't be nervous that you won't do a good job. We have a lot of great tools and resources in place to help you along the way. Um, believe in yourself and know that you can really make an impact for high school athletes. And always, always reach out to others for help. We have a lot of great mentors that are here that are willing to help and want you to be successful in your officiating career. Um, with that, thank you again. It's great that you're all here and I'm going to turn it back over to Jason. Thanks, Jenny. Great job. You know, if if all of you want to become officials, you'll be able to have a very cool room like Jenny Smith with guitars hanging on the wall. So 
<laughs> good time, you'll be able to have that that chance. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, Thank you. Next, uh, Keenan Moore, um, longtime basketball official. It was began his officiating career at the age of 24, and now has 18 years of officiating experience, including uh, traveling ball, high school, and collegiate basketball. Keenan has officiated in the high school state tournament for the last eight years. And in addition, Keenan is a middle school dean and athletic director in St. Paul. So take it away, Keenan. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate the opportunity of being here tonight. Um, I do have to give credit to uh, two gentlemen who I see on the farm tonight, Terry Reynolds and Jerry Teague. Um, I do remember a long, long time ago stepping on the court with those gentlemen and um, them mentoring me my first couple of years of doing high school basketball. Um, and it's because of mentors like that, um, that has allowed me to continue with basketball, um, that has allowed me to continue on the court. Um, you know, aside of that, I, I, I came to a point where I was coaching and I kind of got to a point where my wife was just like, it's either coaching or basketball. You got to figure this out. You can't be married to all three of these things. So I did take the basketball aspect and uh, that allowed me to be able to choose my uh, schedule um, and a little bit of freedom. Um, I definitely got involved with basketball just because of the simple fact I love the game. Um, being a former athlete myself, I, I did have the opportunity of just having great me mentors um, stepping in um, to officiate and just loved it. The number one thing that I use basketball as, as a stress reliever, um, you know, and it's just home away from home, you know, and officiating is a home away from home. If you're going to be on the court or on the field or in the gym or any type of officiating stressed out, then that's not for you. But if you want something that's just uh, an escape goat to be a home away from home, um, create a family, because definitely officiating with other um, individuals is a great opportunity to just create another family and a network of opportunities for yourself. Um, definitely, like Jenny said, it's just like, um, you know, we're all in this together. Um, we are all a part of this and the opportunity to just grow more is, is just great. Um, I definitely am an advocate. I, I love to see that we have um, women officials on this forum tonight. Um, because there are not enough women officials involved in whether it's basketball, gymnastics, or any type of sport that we have at the high school level. So much props to you guys that are out here on this forum tonight. Um, the next thing that I want to let you guys know is, you know, when you're on the when you're on the court, on the court, or on the court, or just types of officials, in my opinion, there's a confident official and a cocky official. You know, the cocky official don't get anywhere the confident official and, and leans on their partners and leans on others and mentors, they're, those are the, the officials that grow. And I believe that's the main reason why that I've been able to do what I've been able to do just because of who I've had before me um, and also um, the teaching and listening to, to the knowledge that's been um, brought to me. I still make mistakes, I absolutely do. Um, and I will continue to make them, but I'm also continue, I will also continue to grow from them. Um, and I'm not a closed book. I am an open book. Um, and so it's just, you know, my opportunity is, is to just give back, you know, like I just said with Jerry Teagues and Terry Reynolds, uh, those are a couple guys that, that, uh, gave into me early in my career and seeing them out here. And so I thank you guys again. Um, and if I could be of any help to anybody, please, please reach out to me. Um, and I will do my best at anything, you know. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. I appreciate it. Um, you're going to hear from a few other great officials tonight and um, reach out. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Keenan. Appreciate that. Um, I like that you mentioned that it's a stress reliever. Uh, a lot of people think that officiating is show up and get yelled at, and that's not necessarily the case all the time. It does happen, but um, you know, but it is a stress reliever. It's a chance for us to get out and run around and get some exercise and, you know, just get away from, you know, the stresses of the day. So, uh, appreciate that viewpoint there, Keenan. So appreciate, uh, uh, your efforts tonight. Uh, Rick Rude, uh, next, he's our, uh, state wrestling coordinator. Uh, Rick began officiating high school wrestling in Minnesota in 1979, and he joined the Southern Minnesota Wrestling Officials Association, which at the time had eight members. 
Uh, at their beginning, they were called the wrestling officials uh, because I guess there was two of them and later changed to the Southern Minnesota Wrestling Officials Association when Rick took over leadership of that association. They now have over 50 officials and cover all of Southern Minnesota. Rick attributes his success and growth of his association to a firm knowledge of the rules and fair enforcement of these rules, strong mentoring of young officials, and an ongoing belief and respect for every individual. Uh, Rick has officiated at multiple sections, state tournaments, uh, invitational tournaments uh, across the state. Um, and in, in addition, as I mentioned, he is the state coordinator of our wrestling officials. So. Um, Rick currently lives in Lakeville with his wife, Patty, and has two grown children and one granddaughter, and he owns Minnesota Environmental Solutions, and he serves as president. So with that, Rick Rude. We got you muted, Rick. Most people, most of the coaches you work for are like that, but we need to unmute for this. I, I really thought you would, you'd you could hear what I was thinking. <laughs> Keenan, as, uh, as always, you're a tough act to follow. Uh, beautiful story, Jennifer as well. Um, you know, I gotta tell you, I, I refed a, a wrestling match one time uh, at, the, at the Clash and it was a great team that came out of Punahou, Hawaii. They were judo trained and, and they did things that we'd never seen before. And I really think I might've seen a Pike Sukahara. I didn't know what to do with it. I gave it two points for a takedown and we just moved on. But uh, a pretty pretty impressive crew there. Um, as, uh, as Jason mentioned in the introduction, I, I've been officiating now, I guess we're going on year 42. Um, so incredibly uh, fortunate uh, to have surrounded myself with some incredible people. Uh, the year that I started officiating, I got hurt wrestling in college and my coach, my high school coach gave me a rule book and said, you're, you're not done. I know you're not going to go into education. You're not going to be a teacher. Probably won't be a coach. You should be a referee. And I thought, wow, that's that's interesting. And, and I, I never looked back. Uh, my mentor, Dwayne Silker, uh, was probably one of the best mentors anyone could ever have. And unfortunately, last week, Dwayne passed at 90 years old. But he he taught me the number one thing was just respect for every individual know your rules, know them very well, but respect every single individual that you come across. And it was a, a great lesson for me. And one that I've carried forward as we took a very small association and turned it into a very large association. The one thing we do is bring in young officials and train them and train them very well and give them the confidence, the confidence that they're going to know the rules and we're gonna help them. And they're going to be comfortable dictating those rules when the events occur. Now, as I went through my officiating career, also was growing my career, uh, and I got a degree in computer science. And later on, after years of that, I, I went on to law school. And the interesting piece of this was that everything I did in my professional world was a matter of elements. If it was a computer program, there was elements that had to be satisfied before a rule of fire. And if there was a, a law, it had to have certain elements that had to be satisfied before you would have a, uh, a case. Same thing happens in rules. You know your rules very well. Every one of our rules are a matter of elements. And if you study those elements and you break it down into its pieces, you can learn them very well and you can teach it very well to the young officials. And if you find areas where some of your younger officials are having difficulty with something, break that down into the element. There's gonna be pieces where they're rocking and there's gonna be a piece where they're, they're struggling. Break it into smaller elements, find out where the issue is, fix it and put them back together again. And I, I think that just is a, a statement for life as I've moved forward. Uh, one of the things again that we, that I really strongly recommend to all of you new officials that are coming out is get yourself into an association get yourself a good mentor. The associations will do that for you and stick with them, stick with them. And you're going to learn something at every match. I've been in this for 42 years. I learned something all the time. There's constantly a new way of seeing something. Um, it just, it's a constant uh, uh, learning, learning moment. And I think the other piece is you develop a lifelong friendship. And there's a sport wrestling that has given so much to me. And all of you have your sports that have given so much to you in your life. When we finish the state tournament, all of us officials go down and we rough 
a youth tournament. And we're on our hands and knees. Some of these kids are so doggone small. And, and we have tears coming down the side of our faces when we finish these matches. But we're, we're helping these kids through and they, they would have seen us from the stands at the state tournament and now we're refing their matches. And they enjoy that, but they also develop a respect for the rules and a respect for the officials. And they really develop a respect for themselves as they grow into this. So give back to the sport that gave you so much. Don't ever stop learning. And, um, and you're gonna make a lot of friends. Since I've been officiating this and in, in the association, I started officiating weddings. <laughs> I've had, I've officiated seven referees, children's weddings. Uh, so yeah, it is a family and it's a strong family. And uh, uh, the Minnesota State High School League is, is one of those family members and they do a fantastic job. So thank you all, best of luck. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you need anything. And for those of you that wanna join the wrestling forum, I think Pam, I might've made a mistake and not put it in the proper connection, but we did put it in the notes. So if you look in the notes on there under Paul Fischbacher, there's a connect in there that'll take you out to the wrestling forum. So thank you all and, and have a great evening. Thanks Rick. So what's harder officiating weddings or officiating wrestling? Weddings, wow, too many mothers. <laughs> thank you makes sense thanks rick appreciate that good job uh, uh samara hadley uh swimming and diving um excellent role model in that sport uh she began her swim and dive fishing career in 2003 uh as a daughter of, a, of high school and college officials and the granddaughter of a college swim and dive coach samara is a three-time uh, league state meet referee and 15 year plus section official currently samara is the president of the minnesota swimming Officials Association, an all-state organization promoting excellence in swimming and diving in Minnesota, and serves as a member of the league's officials advisory committee. Samara is an active mom to three young boys, two of whom are divers, all three are eighth group swimmers, and she is a sales manager at General Mills and lives with her family in Orono. So Samara Hadley. Thanks so much, Jason. Um, appreciate Everything that's already been said, I don't know how much uh, different I will <laughs> I will share. Um, but like Jason mentioned, I grew up on the pool deck. I was a swimmer um, since I was I can remember. Um, and my parents were officials and still actually are active officials uh, in the Mankato area. And um, because of injuries, I did not uh, end up swimming in college, but I knew that um, the passion that I had for swimming and uh, diving was one that I wanted to continue. And so like a few others have said, um, I just wanted to stay involved. And so the way that I did that was I actually uh, made some money <laughs> during college um, on the side by being on the pool deck um, all through college. So that's how I got involved. And I, I really didn't know um, that I would be this involved still all these years later um, with three young kids and, and working outside the home. But um, what's really kept me coming back, like I think everyone else has said, is the relationships. And the relationships that I've built, um, not only with uh, fellow officials, but even swimmers. Um, you, you know, you see the, sw the same kids uh, you know, week after week, uh, and you and you see how how different they they are from year to year, even, um, and that's been really really impactful for me. Um, you know, when when a lot of people are passionate about a sport, they come together, and um, I think that's why you see such strong relationships with other officials, um, and and with other coaches. Um, some of the highlights that I, I can say with some of the relationships that I've built are we had an all uh, female uh, state uh, crew a couple of years ago, um, which was really great to see. And I know Keenan had mentioned um, the importance of women uh, in officiating in all sports. And I had a, a great experience this year. I was on a new, uh, new pool, pool deck um, as I was kind of traveling a lot of different places this fall. Um, but one of the young swimmers came up to me and she's like, it's so great to see a fellow, a fellow or another woman, um, as, as an official. And she actually proceeded to ask me about how she could get involved someday. And, um, I think that's super awesome to, to continue to be a role model. And I know that, um, I know that that's important to, to show young swimmers and divers, um, as well. Um, I, you know, I, I see my kids uh, now growing up around swimming and diving. They've seen my passion. 
Um, and it's, it's really not, not a question that mom is at state and at sections every year as it's really like the best uh, days of my life um, every year. And I'm just so thankful for that. And I just echo um, what everyone has said about relationships. Um, from an advice perspective, you know, what I would say is that I think Eric kind of mentioned it, a lot of people are needed to continue to make these sports better and um, to continue to um, place importance on, on all the sports and activities that we have. And um, you are needed. And um, it's not always a glamorous job. Um, <laughs> as Jason shared, I guess you can search from a recent experience where he was on the football field and had a little, <laughs> a little flip. I don't, I don't know if Jenny could have uh, <laughs> judged it, but um, it's not always glamorous, but it is so, so, so rewarding. And um, here I am years later, um, now having children who are, are, are actually diving and swimming. And um, it's actually kind of uh, reignited my love for the sport. Um, and I'm so, so privileged to be a part of, a part of it. And um, I would just encourage you ask the questions. Um, you're going to see kids, students at their, at their highest of highs, you know, in their, in their uh, careers of, of high school athletics and arts. And um, you're also going to see some lows, uh, but it's been super, super rewarding for me to be a part of those and um, we're all needed. So welcome. Thank you for joining us and I appreciate uh, all of your time. Thanks, Samara. Yeah, just a lot of common themes, you know, some sports that couldn't be more different between wrestling and gymnastics and basketball, swimming and diving, and just a lot of common themes. And and I I'll I I have to tell you, Samara, that you know when I fell and did a somersault last Saturday in my football game, my my toes were perfectly pointed on my somersault, so I would have gotten points in diving and gymnastics both. So. Um, thank you, Samara. Uh, very well done. Appreciate that. Our next, uh, our next presenter, uh, John Priester, uh, multi-sport official, uh, started officiating high school and collegiate uh, sports in 2000. He's officiated uh, baseball, hockey, and football. Uh, attended a a uh, professional baseball player academy. He was awarded with seven straight Division II regional baseball tournaments while working Division One, Two, II, and Three baseball. Uh, John has umpired in several league uh, state tournaments, and he worked the home plate assignment for the first championship game played at Target Field. Um, they needed an improvement because I worked the game before him, and they were looking for uh, something a lot better. So they brought John in to work the plate, and everyone remembers that tournament for quality experience that it was. So uh, thanks, John, for that. He's also been assigned to five league uh, state hockey tournaments and several hockey section finals. Uh, he's currently a board member uh, with uh, the Minneapolis Hockey Officials Association and also the uh, vice president and college chair for Northwest Association of Umpires. Uh, John grew up in Oakdale and graduated from North St. Paul, uh, lives in Stillwater with his wife, Jill, and their three kids. So take it away, John. Is it just me or am I, can anyone else hear John or is it just me? You guys good? No. No. We're not hearing you, John. No, you're on, you're on yeah. mute. That part's good. Oh, now you're muted. John, are you on double mute somewhere else? Like, I don't know if you've connected elsewhere where that's muted. I would say the last thing, John, is turn your volume up on your computer. Maybe that might be an issue as well. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Sorry about that. Um, I only sit in front of a computer 10 hours out of the day. You think I should have figured that out? So 
Thanks, Jason. Um, <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity uh, as I was so I was saying it's great to see all the familiar faces on the on the call tonight and all the new faces. Um, I got involved when I was a little kid. I would actually ride my bike down and uh, umpire little league baseball games in my neighborhood. Um, after college, uh, honestly, I was looking for some way to uh, buy a new car and a house. So I got involved, I did a Google search and got involved in, in umpiring. Um, and that, that took me to a professional baseball academy a few years later, uh, something that I never knew even existed. Uh, but with you know, the connections that I got uh, in the baseball world, it, it really made me, uh, helped me grow as an official. Um, that, that branched out into uh, baseball and then also into hockey. Um, one of the things that I would advise everyone on the call here today is get involved in anything. Um, I'm working two sports. Uh, these are both sports that I played in high school. Um, I used to work football. It was not a sport that I played in football, but uh, again, I, I got involved in it. Um, I'm going to date myself here, but there was no lacrosse when I went to high school. There was no lacrosse when I uh, graduated from college uh, in 2000. Um, we're looking for uh, lacrosse uh, officials. A lot of hockey officials are now par participating in lacrosse. Um, I, another thing that has changed is um, when, when I was in school, it was called ringettes. There was no girls hockey. Um, so the, it, it has uh, changed over the years. So my, my one thing is get involved in something. It, you don't have to have a background. You don't have to have played in college. You don't have to have uh, played in high school. Uh, get involved in something. Uh, for example, I, I've got uh, three kids and they all play soccer. It's, it's not a sport that I ever participated in. It's not a sport that I officiate in, uh, but I, I do work with uh, the officials that are out doing, uh, you know, little league soccer, uh, and talking to them about uh, just being an official in general. I don't know any of the rules of soccer, but I, I can, uh, you know, talk to them about confidence and dealing with people. Um, another thing, and it's been brought up a few times here, is um, we're looking for more female officials. Um, there are a ton of females that are involved in high school hockey, but we need more officials. Um, and, and again, and it's, it's just not officials in, in girls hockey. Uh, we're actually fortunate enough to have a, a few females that also work uh, boys high school hockey. Um, but we need officials and especially women, female officials in all sports at all levels. Um, what you've heard a lot is friendship. And that is really one of the things you, you can't pay for it. It happens. Um, and um, these are officials, honestly, that some of them were at my wedding. Um, I have other friends in the officiating wor world that I work with. Uh, during the day. Um, I have other officials that uh, our kids are now friends uh, bef because of the connections that I made uh, during my journey. Um, and I you know another nugget, uh, Jason, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I think it was maybe 15, 16 years ago, we were running around on a college baseball field together over in the old Metrodome. Um, you know, it, it, our journeys have taken us in different paths, uh, but at the end of the day, we're all officials um, at, 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 you know, in, inside, in our, in our heart. Uh, finally, just a, a few things on uh, hockey specific information. Uh, if you're involved in USA hockey, get involved in high school hockey. Uh, if you're an ex-player at the high school, college level, junior level in, 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 uh, in hockey, uh, get involved. Honestly, ex-players make the best officials. And at the end of the day, hey, if you can skate, we'll take you. We're looking for people that can skate. 
Um, you know, hockey is unique. You got to be able to stand up on ice. Uh, but if you're interested in the sport and you got a pair of skates and you can put it on, we'll put you in the right position. So again, thanks. Um, I will be hosting a hockey and baseball um, a forum after this. Um, I'm involved in both, uh, both hockey and baseball associations. So I will try to cover uh, both of those sports at the same time. So again, uh, Jason, thank you. And to all the uh, uh, officials out there uh, that I've worked with on the field, uh, thank you. And for all the new people, I, I hope that we can make a connection and, and set you in the right direction. So thank you, Jason, take it over. That, thanks, John. Uh, appreciate that. Um, yeah, good memories for sure. And um, we go on our different paths, but here we are 15 years later, and we're back on the same presentation and um, hoping that people can take the baton. So, all right. Um, we're going to now talk about just some, uh, some steps and uh, basic pieces of uh, you know, becoming an official uh, with the league and just, you know, the steps that we're looking at. And I'm going to uh, present that with uh, Brett Carlson. Um, Brett's been, been uh, really instrumental in um, keeping this uh, officiating recruitment forum uh, going. Um, he, he has pushed to, you know, make sure that we have this opportunity for people. And originally we had this in person um, at Tartan a couple years ago, and then we were gonna have it in person again, but then the pandemic came along, we had to uh, make adjustments and you know, have this uh, recruitment forum. And we think it's a really good way to uh, connect with many different individuals across the state in a variety of sports. So Brett will be presenting with me. Um, Brett is the uh, community education director for North Branch Area Public Schools. And prior to serving as the community education director there, he was also the activities director at North Branch and Lakeville North High Schools. Uh, Brett is part of the coaches education faculty, so we won't fault him for that. <laughs> we'll have to in the officiating uh, forum, but uh, he works a variety of state tournaments and assists in a number of our initiatives and initiatives and programming. So, uh, thanks to Brett for his his constant support and. Uh, um, and assistance with this forum. So part of our, the league officiating program, I, I'm the coordinator of officials and we have a number of regional and state coordinators, associations, charter clinicians, observers that are all in position to assist officials across the state. And Pam, uh, Pam Inniger is our uh, uh, assistant uh, in the officials program and she's excellent. Um, and if you need anything at all, just give Pam a call. She'll, she will get you going with, uh, with whatever you need. Um, but these folks that are listed on the screen, these are the, the, the people that really make the officials program go. And um, uh, they'll always be there for you to help with mechanics, with rules, with, with whatever it might be. So those are the folks that are, are really instrumental in, in the success of the program. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Brett to talk about um, you know, becoming an official and, and, you know, really why he pushed to have this, uh, this program. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Brett for this, for this piece. Thanks, Jason, and, and welcome everyone. Um, what Jason means to say by pushing for this is that I was really pretty annoying about it a few years ago and really wanted to, uh, kept hearing about the need for officials and, and thought, let's get creative in how we do it. Um, really our, our first one, as Jason talked about a couple years ago um, at Tartan High School was geared towards kids going off to college as many of our voices talked about um, whether it was looking for a part-time job to buy a car to get through college. Uh, we really started it for that um, to try to figure out a way to help college kids earn a little income and get through school and it's grown to this and it's really exciting. I saw the um, list of attendees and we have people from all over the state so that is just wonderful. As you read the bullets there on your screen um, those are nothing new. People have talked about that for the last half hour on this and um, those things have already been highlighted. But really, as Samara said, you are needed. And in my opinion, there is no better place to be than in a gym or a rink or whatever it might be, working with young people, whatever your passion is for sports or sports to officiate that. Working with young people is just awesome and it's amazing. And um, you'll see their highlights 
and it's just a, a wonderful place to be. So I, I hope that you take that next step and you and you challenge yourself to do that because it will it will be rewarding for you. There is no doubt about that. And as again, we heard through all of our officials I already talk about um, it's all about relationships. Life is all about relationships. And uh, one of my favorite parts of my job is I get to work the state tournament. They haven't kicked me out yet. Um, and it's just fun to visit with officials and there's just no better group of people than um, officials and how much they just care about kids and want to see kids be successful. So I really hope that you, obviously those are other things on the screen too, but I really hope those two things kind of stick with you as uh, you continue your journey. So thanks again for being with us tonight. Thanks, Brett. Yeah, you know, I just, I see all of those things and more um, and just think about my own officiating experience and um, all the, all the friends um, that I've made over the years and all the places I've been able to go that if it were not for officiating, I would not have had the opportunities uh, that I've had. Um, I've been fortunate enough to uh, officiate in uh, 41 states across the country. Um, and if I didn't give that high school uh, officiating a try, you know, 20 some years ago, um, may not be in, in some of the great places uh, that I've, I've been able to, uh, to go to uh, to date. So, um, you know, obviously not all of us are in this to get into, you know, division one or professional, it's just to stay involved in the sport that, that we enjoy. Um, you know, but there, there's great opportunities at all levels and all parts of the state. Um, so just, you know, encourage you to give it a try because there's all these benefits and more uh, to becoming an official. So at the league, we, you know, we work to promote officiating as something that's desirable to do. And, um, you know, we tell you what a great thing it is and we think it is. Um, and we think you'll agree if you, if you give it a try. But to, Give it, give it a try and you'll find out, you know, what we mean. Um, officials registration, observation programs, we, we assist in all that to try to help you get better and progress in the program. And, and that includes training development, um, acting as a liaison to our officials associations, always working to get better. Um, when we're officiating, we're always trying to improve our craft and get better from one game to the next. You're never going to work a perfect game. Um, We've all, all officials on, on this call have said if we work a perfect game, match, um, event, whatever it is, that we will retire and all of us are still officiating. So, uh, you know, just, just know that out front. You'll never work a perfect game, but, you know, we're always looking to improve. And the same with the program at the league. And then we're responsible for selecting officials for the state tournaments. Um, in officiating, you know, the, the key aspects are, are what, Rick talked about in his in his uh, uh, presentation, talking about the fundamentals, um, and that's how you'll really uh, get better at the officiating application. And it's same as as playing or participating in a sport. So if you want to get good at shooting free throws, then you need to practice and get muscle memory and be good at shooting free throws. And by basketball today, I can tell you that no one works on free throws, but the the, the comparison, the metaphor for officiating is that if you work on the fundamentals of contest rules, mechanics, communication, um, and work on those pieces, uh, and it will take experience. You're not going to get it overnight. That's going to take you some time. But if you work on that over time, uh, you will become a, a good official. And as you become uh, more experienced and you have more uh, training and rules and mechanics, you're going to enjoy it more um, because you're going to make less mistakes and uh, you're going to have a greater time when you're out there. But no, you're going to make mistakes. We all do. Um, we, we try to promote officiating every turn and Brett's been instrumental in that. Um, we, we have our own uh, Twitter feed, Facebook, et cetera, to promote officiating. Our new website has uh, an officiating um, portal to promote officiating. Uh, now, I'm not sure that showing a track meet in snow and a football game in a blizzard promotes officiating, but uh, if you like that sort of thing, um, you know, this is for you. And I, and you, you see all these people, we have dance team, track, football, you know, pretty different sports, but all of them have a passion for the sport uh, that they enjoy. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier, fishing officiating recruitment portal on the league website. There's a variety of content that will assist uh, prospective officials in connecting them uh, or you to an association. Uh, describe the registration process, and then uh, there's frequently asked questions as well. Um, as always, you can connect with the league or staff or an association mentor uh, to help you. Um, we manage registration, provide uh, service to approximately 6,300 contest officials, which Tim mentioned uh, earlier. And we, we get sport mailings out to all of you, pertinent information, rule books, et cetera. And then we also uh, answer all your emails and phone calls with questions. We're here for you at the end of the day. We're not going to leave you out on an island. We're here to help. Um, both at the league and our associations and our coordinators and clinician staff. If you're ready to register and become an official, we'll send a link out that uh, link for that to you um, in an email to all of you that are, are on tonight. Um, we'll connect you with local associations. Again, there's a number of them that will have uh, Zoom or Google links uh, for you to meet with them and ask questions um, and take advantage of that. Uh, go to as many as you can. Even I would encourage you to go to one for a sport that you really have no experience uh, with and ask them questions. You, you, can, you can learn from all those folks, regardless of whether it's a sport or an association that you may plan to join. Um, we do all of our eligibility uh, and uh, requirements through Arbiter Sports. It's a small fee for new officials. It's $30. Um, typically, there are some other uh, fees included um, outside of the league, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, just to give you an idea of what those might be. But the typical requirements for officials to work varsity contests, a couple online rules meetings, an exam, concussion module, and then a background check. Um, if you complete those pieces, then uh, you would be eligible to work uh, varsity contests. Uh, here's that link, and um, this gives you an idea of what the registration dashboard would look like on Arbiter. And again, we're here to help. Give us a call, and we can talk you through this process. Um, we got Samara, one of our presenters, uh, front and center on this picture. Uh, talks about uh, the fees, $30, sport one, uh, 15 for additional sports. And then you can also purchase additional publications uh, on our online store, such as Simplified and Illustrated and Rules by Topic. And those are really good uh, documents for new officials to have, even veteran officials, because it, it either breaks the rules down by topic or uh, what I like, the Simplified and Illustrated is um, really breaks it down into uh, smaller chunks and it has a lot of illustrations and pictures uh, to take you through the rules because that's going to be one of the bigger challenges getting into officiating is if you played the sport it doesn't necessarily mean that you know the rules and um, and you find that out to get into officiating so I think those documents might help you uh, as you go through this process. Talked about a background check it's required for all new officials we do rechecks every five years which is why we require that you put your birth date and social security number in Arbiter when you uh, register so that we can go ahead and run those. You don't need to do anything separate. You just can send to a background check, put that information in and we will run it. And no news is good news on the background check front. Concussion module, uh, state law requires that anyone that's working with, with, uh, with kids under the age of 18, whether it's as a coach or as an official, uh, is required to complete a concussion module. And that's available to watch now. Uh, you retake that uh, course every three years. Um, every, every sport that we have and all 18 sports that have officials has uh, a online rules meeting and it has an exam. Um, there's also a general officiating module that covers uh, pieces that are um, uh, common to all of our sports and activities. Um, each, each online module varies in length. It depends on, the, on rule changes, points of emphasis, and those kind of things. And then the exam is anywhere from 30 to 100 questions, uh, must score 80% to pass. And it is an open book exam, and you get two tries uh, if you were to fail on the first attempt. We always recommend to connect with a mentor or association to help you through the test um, because you find that first time you find out really uh, where your rules knowledge is and how much we need to 
uh, get in the book. And even veteran officials need to keep their nose in the rule book long term um, because we're always learning something new. In that packet that you'll receive, uh, if you register with the league, you will get a rule book uh, in your packet, uh, case book uh, or mechanics manual, depending on the sport, uh, and then any rule changes and points of emphasis and general league info. Um, our returning officials don't get packets this year. We do rule books every packets every other year, um, but for all new officials, you will receive a packet uh, this year if you go ahead and register with the league. Uh, here's a snapshot of our officials by sport over the last uh, um, 12, 13 years. And um, we've kind of maintained steady numbers across all of our sports. Um, but you, you see sometimes when we have um, a downturn in the economy, we see a little bit of an uptick in officials. And, um, you know, folks are looking for an extra opportunity to make some other income. And Officiating is a good a good way to do that, as Brett mentioned. And when I was in uh, when I was in college, I was working varsity sports all year long as an official. Um, and my my student loans were gone uh, two years after I graduated from college. Now, you know, I granted the amount that you pay for college has changed a little bit uh, since then, but um, you know, there was a lot of opportunities for me. Um, to do things uh, financially that most college kids can't can't do, and officiating high school sports allowed me that opportunity. And uh, one of those is um, my parents were looking to move uh, houses, and they were in a bidding war, and they needed an earnest check for five thousand uh, dollars to uh, win their their bidding war, and they got the check from me. Um, and uh, that's the house they still live in, and that was 22 years ago. So, um, you know, there's opportunities that are out there financially. Um, is it huge money? No, but I think it, it does provide a lot of great opportunities, um, you know, to make, to make some money uh, that can allow you to do things that maybe you wouldn't have opportunities to do otherwise. Um, we, we create kind of curriculum and develop opportunities uh, in a number of sports, and these are the training and development that we provide from the league. But again, our associations uh, provide you know many outstanding training opportunities at the local level, so they they would assist you with this as well. Um, we have video training. Excuse me. We have uh, clinics, um, mid-season check-ins now on Zoom that allow folks to ask questions and and find more out about rules and mechanics of their sports. So that those have been really well received and we will continue with those this year. Um, we have developed, we develop and implement rules meetings, training for all those 18 activities. And typically we schedule 35 in-person training clinics statewide in a typical year. Now this year is not typical, not having in-person meetings, but we've replaced those with Zoom and it's been a great opportunity for us to connect again, with people from across the state and across a number of sports. We mentioned this earlier, we have 100 unique official associations statewide. Um, many of those uh, service a, a number of sports um, and several only have, have one. So swimming has one, dance team has one, boys and girls lacrosse just have one. Um, but then there are many associations that may serve football, basketball, um, baseball, softball, um, and volleyball as well. So we have uh, many varieties out there and uh, they do an outstanding job of supporting um, new officials, their uh, veteran officials in their group, and then our member schools. They do a really great job of being uh, a conduit to them and, and providing great service to them. We host annual meetings for those charter clinicians so that we can talk about rules and mechanics so that they can bring it back um, to new officials and assist uh, with those in their groups. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier. There are some other you know, fees that come with starting as an official. Um, there's equipment and uniforms that you're gonna have to uh, have to get. And those, those costs range any from 100 to 300 or more, depending on the sport and what kind of quality we're talking about and what you may already have. And check with your association or leaders in your um, in your area or your sport 
they may have uh, equipment they can help you with um, uh, or discounts that are available for new officials as well. Um, typically, we, we tell you to work a scrimmage. The scrimmages aren't happening this year with COVID, but you know, similar to what John Priester mentioned in his his presentation is, you know, get involved in anything that you can. That includes work as many games and scrimmages that you can fit in because that's how you're going to learn. Um, and it'll allow you to meet some of the veterans who can help guide you that Tim talked about earlier tonight. And once you've done all these steps, you're ready to start. And, you know, find a mentor so you can get advice and feedback. Um, keep getting better. Keep working on your craft. Um, there, we're always going to learn something. Game. There will be games that don't go well. Um, that's what your mentor is for. They can be there to assist and help you uh, in your journey. Um, we have insurance as part of the league's program, so you're covered there, but there are additional insurance programs out there uh, for you if you're interested. And NESL and Referee Magazine are a good, a good resource for you if you're interested. And finally, uh, thanks. Uh, it's been said many times, but I want to reiterate it. Uh, thanks to all of you. Um, for taking, you know, that that next step so towards becoming an official, giving a chance by coming on tonight to find out more and tell your friends. Um, you know, we talk about your winter friends, um, you know, as officials, but I can tell you that once they become your winter, your winter friends, they're going to become your summer and your fall uh, friends too. Um, you know, those are going to be the people they're going to play slow pitch with and um, hopefully someday go to restaurants with, um, and, uh, you know, they're part of, part of your life. They're your friends and they're your go-to confidence. And, um, and, uh, we have Jenny Smith, uh, another presenter in this picture, and you can see how much, uh, she enjoys what she does. And we're confident that you will too, um, if you give officiating a try. So, um, with that, uh, we're going to, uh, um, move back to uh, to Laura to describe uh, um, how you can join the association roundtables uh, to ask questions uh, about the associations or the specific sports. Um, and again, we encourage you to join as many of those as you can, ask questions, um, you know, get all of your concerns, questions, uh, comments, and questions. So we'll turn it over to Laura to describe that process. Great, thanks, Jason. So I'm going to drop in the chat the link. I have a mouse tonight that won't drive straight. So that link in the chat will take you to this page that has a list of the associations who are hosting roundtables tonight. And those associations were asked to tell you what association they were, what area of the state they cover, what sports their association covers, and then they provided us with the Zoom link. Um, it looks like all of these except the one for m and should be just a click and go. This one has, if you look at the link, it has the um, access code and password in it also. So that one might take a, a, an extra click to get you into that. Um, and after I told Rick I did his right, I'm looking, Rick's is actually the second one. That's the US05. So if you're looking for Rick's wrestling one, this US05 is the one that will get you into his. So with that, as Jason wraps up, those of you that are jumping into association meetings, now is your time to move into that area. If there are questions that you have for Jason or others, you're welcome to stay in this part of the Zoom room and ask those questions. If you're having trouble getting into any of those association ones also, just stick here and we'll do see what we can do to help you get into those. Jason, any last words? Well, thanks, Laura, and thanks to all our presenters. Uh, appreciate their their work, um, their willingness to be a part of the night and take some time out because they know how important it is to uh, to help new officials get off on the right the right foot. So, um, and thanks to Laura and Pam and Tim for their 
and and Brett for their support as well of this. Um, they put up with my with my constant uh, initiative, so I appreciate their support and work on that. But we will be here in the Zoom in the main Zoom. If you have questions, uh, throw those in the chat. Otherwise, we encourage you to join as many of the uh, association roundtables as you can. Thank you all. Um, somebody asked if I would share the link to the wrestling in the main one. I can do that. Um, so make sure you're just working through your mental process, um, picking up whether the throw is a true throw, could be could be a trouble throw. I just posted in John should be the wrestling one. Okay. Thank you.